time again for the Candlepin Challenge, produced by CNA in conjunction with the International Candlepin Bowling Association. Well, hi again, everybody, and welcome back inside the Woburn Bowler Home. John Holt with Mike Morgan in for Dan Murphy for the next four shows. Yeah, let's hear it for Mike. Good to have you, the newly minted Hall of Famer. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to the, uh, it's a little different than bowling, but I'm looking forward to the challenge. Well, it's good to have you and your insight. We will speak with the reigning champ, uh, Det Klein, in just a minute. But first, to meet the challengers, we say hello to Trina Fernandez. Hi, Trina. Hi, John. Thanks a lot. Well, today we have Mark Strangio and Jeff Soretz back again. But, Mark, we'll start with you. You were on once before, got yeah. past the challenger round. Then what happened? Uh, I lost to Joe Cassio and, you know, his run of six wins in a row. Well, tough matchup today. What's your strategy? Nothing. <laughs> nothing. He's nothing. He's nothing. He's just a man, we think. He's just a defending champion. No problem. Okay, well, hey, I like the confidence. What do you think about that? That's cool. I like that, too. <laughs> well, you took it all last year, so are you hoping to do the same again this year? It'd be nice to get by Mark, you know. It's a tough bowler, and uh, we'll see what happens after that. Well, it's a long season. I'm sure we'll see you back again lots more times. Back over to you, gentlemen. Okay, thank you, Trina, with uh, one of the good ones, Dead Klein, uh, back looking to make it two in a row, and a little pressure on you because of our color guy here. He, he knows your history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike and I have had some uh, head-on matches, and, uh, you know, he wins some, I win some, and uh, Mike's quite a bowler himself, so. Well, he's uh, in the booth today. Good luck to you as you bowl. Thanks very much. I'll do my best. We're back with the Challengers match right after this on CNA. Back in Woburn and all set to go. John Holt, Mike Morgan, and Trina Fernandez with you on the Candlepin Challenge. Dan Murphy away for a few weeks, so we brought in a Hall of Famer to fill his shoes, and we are all ready to go with the Challengers match, the one-game match. Jeff Surrett, our reigning overall champ from a year ago and uh, three of the last four years, for that matter, to take on Mark Strangio from Watertown, Massachusetts. Lanes 35 and 36 in use as usual. It's on the head pin to drop six. He'll be open in this first box. Mike, uh, the bowlers like this format, just one game here, not a lot of room for error. Yeah, the loose pins add up in these, you have to, like that, get one or two with every ball. He, sta he starts with a seven. You don't have much room for uh, error here, one string. Over to 36. Dead Klein waiting in the uh, wings for the winner. Leaves three to the right. Triangle's a tough shot. He's got the six and the uh, nine and the 10 in that back row. Got just the nine. So two open frames to start for Mark. Nine to go with that seven. Gets him to 16. Get those two boxes in. You can take a break. Maybe some of the butterflies leave after the opening frames. Yeah, you don't want to give Jeff too many openings early. Jeff from Drake at Mass. His first box. Oh, I pinned her up. Two pin. Nice guide. That should help. He marks right off the bat. Yeah, Jeff's very tough. You don't want to give him too much of a lead early. One of the uh, outstanding young bowlers in the scene. He has been dominant on this program over the last uh, four or five seasons. Get away with that one. Fills it with seven. The one, the two, the four remaining. Cap bud the death shot. That's 10. 10 box up to 27. And Jeff Surrett with that early lead by 11 pins on Mark Strangio. Mark would like to get one just to relax a little bit and get him rolling. Here he is in the third box, coming in with the average of 123. Nice ball. It's two good balls in a row. 
Lumpkin looking at the 6, 9, 10. Nice shot there. The triangle is a very difficult shot. His first mark, spare to the third. Call and Ward Phil. We got away with it. Got some wood to help in the back. Oh, that cap could be dangerous. Yeah, he tried to avoid the cap and just put a little left. Got fortunate on that fill, didn't look great, but got him eight, and he's at 44 through four. <coughs> Jeff's average a big 133. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think that's the three pin that slid over there. That, was, that wasn't deserved. What can he do with this? Wow. If he ever made the right. that, there would have been an investigation. <laughs> so he gets to 10, not leaving a pin yet through three boxes. Here's the replay. Wow, the three pins slid around the, the six pin. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> I think it was on a string. Bad break to 110 with a little help back there. Don't have to cut it as far. Ooh, nice try. Again, hasn't left a pin up yet. It used to be the case through four. Maintains his three pin lead. 47 to 44, so we come up to box five. Sure have a couple here. Get to the toward the six pin. Try to carry two. See if the wood snaps to the left. Okay, got the two on the right. Eight bucks. Second appearance of the show for Mark. If you'd like to throw a mark up here. You don't want to leave Jeff with two opens. Nice ball. Drops eight. He's got to get up kind of high. The side, the side may carry the five, but I'm not sure. He wants to try to get high. The, the side might leave the five pin. Uh, again, he tried to get high. It went by on the right. Every pin's going to be crucial when you are opposite Jeff Surratt. Yeah, lo loose pins do add up, in this, especially on one string. So try to get as many as you can with every ball. That is at 10, so through six, he is at 62. Jeff at 47 right now as he steps in for his fifth box. Bonus money in effect, $50 for uh, three marks in a row and 50 more for the second wow. after that. Wood comes up, he's gonna have it come on up a little more. Oh, well, that's got a shot right there. Red line should carry the 10 pin and the ball should hang in and grab the seven. Shot Got right it. there. His second mark, he has a spear in the first now, marking again in the fifth. Pretty big fill here, important fill. He could get up by a couple marks with a decent fill here with four to go. Diamond right, six drop. Got the uh, three, the five, the six, and the nine remaining. Nice try, left the five pin. That's a big pin, it'll keep it over 10. 10 pin lead. 72 to 62. Four boxes remaining. Mark's gonna need to live up to his first name. 
needs a mark or two or three down the stretch. Watch that wood out of there. Clear shot at the 2-5. There it is, his second mark, both spares. Comes in the seventh. Big ball here, the foundation box, the eighth box. You'd like to sit down with a mark if you could. Well, that's got a chance. I think he has to try to get by that front wood. I think if he can get to it, the red line or a little left, he should carry this. The nine pick could be trouble. We made it. Two in a row. He'll go for bonus money when he steps back in. See if Jeff can answer. It's the shot right here. Cheryl Carey pushed straight back. On the head bin, but just five fall. Leaves the 4-7 uh, and the uh, 3-6-10. He wants to try to grab two. He wants to get a little high on the wood here. Try to get a nine out of it. He'll still have the lead. Nice nine out of that. That's a lead of two through seven complete. But now, though, he is opposite that spare in the eighth. Does he have an answer? Barely a strike. Wants that wood out of there. Stays out of the way. Wants to be a little left of the red line. Let's see what this wood does. Flattens out. I think he'll still try to go left of the red line and hope the ball carries it. I don't think the left wood's a, an option, I don't believe. Oh, jumped over. That was the place, I thought. down the stretch. Wall. Two pins. Mark's uh, working on a spear. This ball to put Mark ahead through eight. So it makes this game so interesting. You don't know what that wood's going to do. This ball. Big eight in the fill. If he picks these two up, it's going to help the cause and get him 50 bucks in bonus money. Three in a row. Pick the eight drop. Very important pin, though. Get every pin you can. Got it. So he gets to 107. He'd like to throw another mark up here because Jeff's one of the best in the game, and he's, he's used to that pressure. They keep going to remain. Pretty good if he makes the head pin. It almost looks like it has to get on and carry the seven. He's got a little guy coming up on the right. No, that's squared up. He has to hit the head pin. Got it. Extra ball coming up, but Jeff Surrett's going to have work to do. He'd like to get at least over four to force Jeff to mark twice. Your math is quicker than Dan Murphy said after to Sam. Well, I've been on the bottom end of a lot of this stuff. <laughs> All right, 123. Jeff's got 32 to tie. So he needs two marks. If he doesn't, if he doesn't spare here or strike, he's going to need a double. So he needs two marks. Certainly capable of it. A lot of wood in front of that seven. You know, it should should have a good enough angle at least catch that second piece on the seven pin. Anywhere in that wood, I believe, should carry it. Got it. All he's looking for is a pretty good fill and another spare leave. It doesn't have to be a hammer. He's just looking for a nice something he can make. There's Dead Klein. He'll take on the winner. Just a chance, three down the line, two, four, seven on the left. Good bowler like Jeff should make this. It's, uh, it's not out of reach, that's for sure. Yes, 
I tell you, it's not over yet. He still needs six to win, but that's why Jeff's the best in the game. He needs two marks to run that three down the line. That's not easy under pressure. Five ties it, six wins it. Anything less than five, and it goes to Mark Strangio. What a finish. Yes, six. That's why he is what he is. He's unbelievable. Mark rolled a great game there also. Uh, it's a shame someone had to lose that game. It's seven when it's all said and done. 125, 123. Jeff by two pins. He gets that line next to the Candleman Challenge. Following a pretty thrilling challengers match, we are uh, back with the championship here at the Woburn Bowler. Another good, strong crowd on hand, and they will see Det Klein go opposite Jeff Surrett. Det to go first, game one of two. John Holt with Mike Morgan in this week, and for uh, three more weeks as uh, Dan Murphy takes a break. This has all the makings of a great match right here. Jet drops nine. He'd like for that wood to get out of the way. Let's see where it settles. I think he's gonna have to get up high on this one. Either the right, the first cap or the second one. If he sneaks by the first one, he'll catch the second one. Nice shot right there. That uh, one of the signature names on this program over the years. Marlboro, Massachusetts. Fill of six. Leaves the one, two, four, and the uh, nine in the back row. Sleep is the tough one to make on this shot. One pin, a nine in that second box, up to 25 is Dead Klein. Back to Jeff, who uh, was tremendous with the two marks to finish with in the Challengers match to eke out a two pin victory over his opponent, Mark Strangio, 125, 123. I think he has to try to get up high here. I'm not sure if the side will be. He might, no, he might be able to go right on the pin and the ball might jump. He tried the pin, just left up to seven. Opens with a 10. Just very smooth. You don't even really hear his ball making contact with the alley. Very smooth approach. Drops a half dozen. So he'll be open for the first two, the early advantage to debt. There, Jeff. Five pin edge for Dead Klein. What you'd like to do up here is at least try to get one out of every two, and if you do that, you're going to be in every match. Pulled it left, left the cluster six, one, three, six, with the fives, eight, nine. to avoid a bad box, take out three, four, five more here. Very important to get those loose pins. Those separates the 115s from the 120s, this third ball. It's a great out out of that. Nice nine. Dead up to 34. Six. 
three and one split. Oh, nice try. Left the four pin on the left. Three in a row open for Dead after he uh, began things with a spare six. Three for four. It's of course a two game match coming up between games, our strike challenge. Member of the audience will bowl for a hundred bucks if uh, he can get a strike. And uh, today that is Jeffrey Walsh from Lowell. I think that wood's too deep to use, so he's gonna have to try to cut the shot to three into the four. far, well, a lot too far to the right. Yeah, you don't see him pitch out too often like that. Just an eight, left two up. You don't see him leave pins up often. Well, that's only four so far. He left up two in the challenges match. Opposite of nine, now here in the fourth. There he goes. Uh, you just can't get lazy on these. You're just going to reach out, get over toward the six pin, and get toward the red line. He should be all set. He'd rather have it stay down low. Well, still has to do it. Well, he turned a little bit, so the red line should cover both. Got him. Shot. That's Jeff's first mark here in game one. Trailing by five, but he has a ball working. Comes dead up in the fifth. Dead owning that high single at 205. We got away with that. A nice break. Left up to 1 3. Dropped 8. Have to take advantage of breaks like this. Let it get away. Missed opportunity. It's one thing you don't want to do too much with Jeff. If he gets rolling, it's hard to stop. Gets all 10 to move it up to 53 at the turn, 53 through five. He'd like to get one here. He's been open for four. He's got to find that front one here. Tight on the head pin, three and one split. Three, six, 10 on the right, seven on the left. If that wood stays there, you could cut it. You don't have to cut it as far. You might cut it at the wood to carry the seven pin. Let's try. Hit that foul line. You have to get your ball out here at Woob, and if you don't, you hit that foul line, it skips a lot. Fifth box in a row open for Dett. He's at 63 through six. Now here's Jeff following his first mark. He'll fill it up now. Wow. What well, a little pin that was that moved over there, but that's just not right. The nine sliding over to the left. Believe it or not, that might hold it in to carry the eight pin because other than that, that side we're trying was a very tough shot. I don't know what this wood's doing. The wood comes a little more left. It'll give him a hole to shoot. He might get something to come off the wall and he may use that a little bit. Got nice it. Shot. Use that as a nice guy to come off the wall and carry it a couple. Two in a row. The replay. See, the wood came off, held it in, and the two pin went off the wall to carry the eight. Five on the fill, so not great fill, six and a five. This wood might come to the head pin and turn a little. Oh, it just got a lot prettier. Four husband right with the seven pin left. Oh, left the six pin.
Ten box up to 69. Six pin advantage for Jeff Zaret. Six frames into game one of two. Back with more after this on the Candleton Challenge. Welcome back to Uber and back to the match in uh, just a second. We invite you to join us for our next taping, and uh, it is tomorrow. So take a break from uh, raking those leaves and uh, visit us here in Uber. We started about 9 in the morning. Youth bowlers for those four shows. That's always fun. Tomorrow, Sunday, November 9th at 9. John Holt with Mike Morgan and Trina Fernandez. Six frames in to game one of two between the challenger, Jeff Surratt, and the uh, reigning champ, Det Klein. Det currently down six pins. Half force to the left. Yeah, he's just overthrowing a little bit, I think, pulling it to the left. He's got to settle in. There'll be uh, plenty of marks between these two before it's said and done. Still looking at... Oh, they keep going. Looking at two. <laughs> he was looking at four for a brief moment. Two pins up. I'm going to try to make sure you get one, because these loose pins do add up. Six, seven. Sounds a lot better than it is. Now you can't. You got to keep grinding on them pins. That love a mark. Hasn't had one since the opening frame. Now in the eighth. Yeah, you don't want to keep giving Jeff this many openings, so you got to kind of get on the offensive a little bit here. Overcompensated, half with the right. Right now he's fighting himself a little bit, but he's only down by six after six frames. Oh! Nearly recovered for the spare. <laughs> that just wasn't right. <laughs> Stubborn 10. Oh, it slid, up, it slid a couple of inches off his spot. I was ready to say nice shot, and then I saw it stand up. Instead, it's a 10 to 81 through 8 for Dad. And long 7 for Jeff. Drops eight. That's the three uh, and the five. Doesn't want that to settle in there. Just makes it a lot hot. Let's see where it sits. Well, it looks like it's gonna, he's gotta get up on it. I don't, I don't know if down low carries it. He's gonna, I think, try to go high. The side could work, but I'd try to go up on the nose, I believe. Yeah, nice try. That was a tough shot. That's what makes Candlepin so interesting. The wood can be your friend and at the same time come back to haunt you. Seven pin advantage to seven complete, 78-71 for Jeff. Now he's opposite that 10. One thing about Jeff, he doesn't get rattled too easy. Look at that. Will it go? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's moving and sliding, but staying up. Wants that wood to flatten out again here. Can't tell if it's squared up or not. Close call here. The cap comes over, hits it here. It looks like it's gonna fall like right there, then it just settles in. Watch it just slides. It's, I'm not going down. There you go. Seven pin lead with a ball hanging, dead in the ninth. We got away with it, left the front diamond, a one, two, one, two, four, five, one, two, three, five. himself right now he's got to kind of relax here you can't give uh you can't fight it there's only 11 boxes left only a seven as bad as things are he's still in this match so it, one little flurry can turn this in a hurry so he's just going to settle in he's been around for a long time so see, see if he's got it in his bag today
yes. talking about. What nice an ball. answer. Double yeah, bonus ball is coming up to finish the 10th here in game one. Play that's as good as he is. He settled in and threw a hammer. If he can ever get a double here, he can make it a lot more interesting. Kingpin. Can he take out the king for a spear on strike finish? Yes. 108. Jeff's 88 with a ball right here. To the left. Four six left. Try to grab one. Gets a nine to gain two and count. Stretch that lead to 13 through nine complete, but opposite that big 10 now. That Everything over seven here will get the lead, so he'd like to get a mark here. Seven. Two, four, and six. Tough shot. Try to split it or outside off the wall. Oh, he's going to have at least a one pin lead, and if he can grab another one here, a two pin lead. Two, he's up two pins after one. It was 11, though, after eight, so Det's done some work down the stretch. We head to game two and back with the strike challenge after this on CNA. Hello and welcome back, everybody. Well, it's time for the strike challenge, and this week it's down to just $100 because Eric from our own Woburn Bowler won the big jackpot last week. But this week we've got Jeff Walsh. Where are you from? Lowell, Massachusetts. So $100 on the line. Hey, what's, better your, than nothing. <laughs> what's your strategy? Try to hit the head pin. Hit the head pin. Go for it. Thank you. Thank you, Trina. Good approach. Looking for that head pin. See what he can do for 100 bucks. <laughs> Got it, but just uh, six. Well, not a lot of bang for his buck. Oh, he has a chance for the spare. What's that? How much is that worth? $50. Oh, to get the right. spare. A little right of the red line should, should carry. Yes. <laughs> Maybe we ought to put him on the shelf. That's half the jackpot this week. So, hey, he won half the jackpot, 50 bucks. Well done, Jeff. Looks like a guy you're right. He's got some potential to be one of the, the main bowlers on the program down the line. Jeffrey Walsh from Lowell. Congratulations. All right, back to the business at hand, and that's uh, Jeff Serrett and Det Klein with Jeff up two pins, 110, 108. Game to go. I expect a little better ball out of both of this string. Nice ball, triangle right. Six, nine, ten on the right. Right around the ten. Wow. There's so many ways to miss that shot. It's just a tough shot. Ten box. Dead did a nice job to finish strong in that first game to tighten it up considerably. It was almost down once. It should have fell the first time, so that's not a break. That, that was well-deserved right there. That was a good ball. Targeting the 10 for a mark here in the second. Looking at that wood, I mean, you know, as good as Jeff is, it's, uh, it's a lot easier to hit something that long. So I, I'm going to guess he might even use the wood. Yes. Yeah. And he's one of the best in the game. It just goes to show you, you don't have to, you know, take what's given to you. Don't don't be proud. Just it's a lot easier to hit something that's uh, a foot long like that. Dead. Going uh, second as the champ. That 
takes out five. Nice, got a little help on the 7-8 uh, down to three on the right. That, that could snap. You don't have to carry this far. That wood could cover the two on the left. So if he can make the three down the line, he has a shot at this. Ooh, the cap just caught one. All right, right at the wood here. He could clean him up here. Right in the middle, got a seven box. Over to 36, his second frame. Five pin advantage for Jeff, and uh, that's opposite of spin. Takes out the one five. Like to get an eight, nine, a ten out of this and just walk away with. You know, take your loss for that. So I can hope for with this shot. Nice job there. Two, four, seven on the left. That would be a great ten if you can do that. Yes, sir. That's a great ten. That's almost like throwing a mark right there. Now Jeff with the fill following a spear that he had in the second. That's just four. Geez, the woods are not real good, but that might be his option. He's looking at it. If he goes on the side, I don't know what carries the four seven. I didn't think anyone would get that pin. It'd be a nice 10 out of this. Jeff had another tough week, and they had a pro tour this week, and he only hit 14.57. So, oh, you know, that's it. Yeah. Had another tough weekend for Jeff on the tour. <laughs> Two in a row for him. And at the moment, he's about as good as good as they get out there, right? Uh, that would be my, you know, if I had to pick a bowler right now, yeah, Jeff's just the best. I mean, he's beatable, but he's definitely the best bowler in the game, in my my opinion. Looking at five here, two, four, three, six, ten. Spread eagle minus the seven pin. Three, six, ten on the right. Try to get a nice nine to ten out of this. It is a nine to 43. Bowling's not real high right now, though, but uh, the match is competitive, and that's all you're hoping for. Third box for debt. First little flurry could open this thing up by either bowl. Nice ball. Drops eight, leads to six nine on the right. By the six. Like to get this 10 now. You don't want to start losing pins now. It's already, I think, a nine pin advantage. It's opposite of 10. All right, 10 pins. Opposite of nine in the fourth. Be nice to throw a mark up here. You don't want to keep giving that young Jeff a shot because sometimes it's a matter of time before he explodes. Kingpin there, the five pin. Almost imperative to get the mark right here. It's out there for him in the fourth. Take care of business. Nine pins, box completed, but that's working on a spear. Jeff's starting up in the fifth frame here. Leaves to three six. Three pin always looks like it's leaning forward. Right around it. Oh. 
10 box. Let's see now. Jeff, I always say, has a short memory. Let's see if he puts that behind him already and, and focuses in before he throws this ball. That's why he's one of the best in the game. He'll forget that before he releases this ball. Yes. You called that one. Well, I've just been bowling with Jeff long enough <laughs> to know that you can't rattle a kid. Tough break. He hit that eight drop just a little light. It went around it, but he bounced back, lost 10. Cool, calm, and collected for a big strike in the sixth. Way, be, way beyond his years right now. He's very young. He's way beyond his years. Debt with the fill now. Here's his ball in the fifth. Jobs four, cuts the lead to five. It's option of 10 bucks here. In the hole, he'd like to grab at least four here if he could. That's a great 10 right there. Salvages that box very nicely. That trails by five, but he's offset the strike by Jeff. I'd like to throw one up here. There's only four boxes to go after this. He just made for the 10. Let's see if he can repeat it. Buster four right with the four seven on the left. Uh oh, not done yet. Oh, he had pin standing. He had turned his back on things. Turned around to see just one pin up. That gets him 10, it's Jeff Sorretto in the lead at the moment, four frames to go. Can Jeff Sorretto become the new champ? We'll find out next. Back for the finish, Jeff Sorretto in debt climb. Jeff the challenger this week. Ahead by five and these next two balls after that strike in the sixth as we operate now in box seven. Don't see that much out of Jeff. He took the 4-7 out, but he's got a big ball left right here. He'll he'll be back in the pocket here, and don't be surprised if he makes it. Oh, look at this. Well, there's a lot of sliding going on out there today, John. <laughs> Total of eight on the field, 10 in the box. 13 boxes completed. Jeff would like to have a foundation mark here. Keep it two marks ahead. That's you know that's got four frames left. So Jeff would like to throw one up here. Yeah. Might try to go between the, the three pin and the capital wood here and get see what happens. Right, nice bit there. So two open, and it gives Detta an opportunity to give a mark and uh, make this pretty tight. See, Jeff don't meet, leave many loose pins there, just won this spring. I know he's not doing the ball the way he can, but those loose pins make up a lot of bad stuff. Right eight in the back for debt. Tough shot, carrying that sleeper. Now uh, he needs to avoid a low number here. Yeah, I'd like to get at least three or four out of this anyway. Gets four, total of nine. Lost one and count. 14 in the match, off to the 10 box. I think you'd like to have one here. You don't want to give Jeff, if Jeff gets, if he opens here and Jeff throws one, he might put him in a double strike position, so he'd like to have one here. Just can't hope for Jeff to be open two more boxes, I don't believe. Him. 
seven ball. Right now both bowlers are just throwing a hair tight of a ball. They'll loosen up. Three, the four, the six. Well, that makes the shot a little easier here. He can uh, hit it outside or, or inside. Should snap the four pin. So inside or out, he's got a shot at this one. Oh, he hit it a little tight, didn't touch the wood, so. Ooh, big pin, 15 pins, two to go. Jeff can throw a mark up here. He's gonna make it awful difficult for debt. Four, seven on the left, drops eight. Jeff Bowles anchor on his pro league team, and um, I've seen him pull some magic out of his hat, so he's the guy you want up when you need a mark. The automatic almost, I hate to say it. You know, I don't want to sound, you know, <laughs> but I've been around the guy long enough to know. He'd like a big fill here, put that in a double strike. Huge fill of nine. Seven pin remaining. One more ball coming up. We bowled this team Friday, huh? <laughs> he was high man in the match. He pulled out two strings. The team bowled great. He's just uh, fun to watch when he's rolling. more. Good place to leave that. Eight Philly left the 6-7. 238 total for the two. 128 in this game. I believe that needs a triple. If he does fair triple, that's 50. 128 with only time. He needs a triple. He has to have a strike here or it's over. Don't get it. That'll do it, that'll close out the match. Maybe make a shot and throw a double or something, make some money, but this match is closed out. Jeff Surrett, in a familiar spot, the champion, the reigning champ on the Candleman Challenge. He will be back next week. He'll be the first to tie, he dodged the bull in this match, but the, the next, I would want to be the next guy to add the bull. Because I don't think you'll see a 238 out of him next match. I'd rather bowl a guy after he hit the 290 than the 230, because you don't expect him to hit 290 back to back, but I would want to be the next one in line for Jeff. Two, four, five, triangle to the left. And one more ball coming up for Depp for good measure to get us to the final numbers. That's a great bowl. He just didn't have a great day today. In my opinion, he'll be in the Hall of Fame in the next committee on the next vote, I believe. Certainly deserve it. He's done a lot in this game. That gets him six more. So 104 in this game. 212, 238, 212. That's a 26 spin victory for the new champ, Jeff Surrett. We'll come back to Woburn to wrap it up after this on CNA and the Candlefoot Challenge. Back in Woburn for the wrap up as Jeff Surrett defeats Dead Klein. I know you could have bowled better, but it was enough to win. Yeah, I'll take it. Win's a win, and uh, hopefully I'll bounce back next week. Well done. You know, like I was saying, I wouldn't want to be the next one to bowl Jeff when he hits 238, but there's a lot of sliding, Jeff. Does that bother your mindset? Or? Uh, this this taping, it, it got to me, but uh, I just got to stay with it and uh, take it ball by ball. All right, Jeff, well done. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Jeff Surratt, our new champ. We thank you for watching the Can Open Challenge. See you next week right here on CNA.